When you visit a website, what you see is the result of rendering, which is the process of turning code into visual pages on your screen. There are multiple ways to render a website, and each approach affects performance, SEO, user experience, and developer workflow. Let's explore the five main rendering strategies used today, which are static site generation, server side rendering, client side rendering, incremental static regeneration, and streaming and partial hydration. So, static site generation, what is it? Well, static site generation pre builds the HTML for every page at build time. This means all your pages are generated once when you deploy the site and then served as static files. Now how this works is, you write your code, which is usually in a framework like Next.js, Astro or Hugo, and then during deployment, the framework runs a build process to fetch any necessary data and generate HTML files. These HTML files are stored on a CDN and served instantly to users. The benefits of this is, it has blazing fast performance because there is no computation on request. It's SEO friendly since search engines can crawl full HTML content and it's scalable where you can handle a massive number of visitors with ease. And its limitations are that pages are only updated when the site is rebuilt and that dynamic data such as livestock prices or dashboards is hard to manage. SSG is usually used in blogs, documentation, portfolios, landing pages, basically anything that doesn't change frequently. Then there's server-side rendering. The server-side rendering generates the page's HTML on the server for every user request. Instead of pre-building pages, the server builds each page on demand based on the latest data. How this works is, a user requests a page, the server fetches data, renders the page with that data, and sends fully formed HTML to the browser. And then once loaded, JavaScript takes over to make the page interactive. The benefits of this is, pages are always up to date with the latest data, it's still SEO friendly since HTML is delivered on the first load, and personalized content such as dashboard user profiles is easy to support. The limitations of this is, slower initial load compared to static sites, and it requires a running backend server, increasing the infrastructure complexity and cost. SSR can be used in e-commerce product pages, user dashboards, or basically pages with frequently changing or user-specific content. Then there's client-side rendering. Client-side rendering means the browser does most of the work. The server sends a nearly empty HTML file, and JavaScript fetches content and renders the page inside the browser. So how this works is, the user requests a page, then the server sends a minimal HTML file with a script tag, then JavaScript loads, fetches data from APIs, and renders the content dynamically in the browser. The benefits of this is, it has fast navigation between pages once the app loads, which is great for single page applications, and it has excellent interactivity and smooth UX once everything is loaded. The limitations are poor initial load performance, because users see a blank screen until the JS finishes loading, and SEO problems unless additional tools like pre-rendering or SSR fallback are used. It's used in websites such as admin panels, dashboards, internal tools, basically apps where SEO isn't critical but interactivity is. Then there's incremental static regeneration. This is a hybrid between static and server rendering. It allows you to build pages statically but update them incrementally in the background without rebuilding the entire site. How this works is, pages are built at build time or the first time they're requested. You can set a revalidate time, for example like 60 seconds, so the page is rebuilt in the background after that period. And then the next visitor gets the updated version automatically. The benefits of this is, it is the best of both walls, which is, it's fast like SSG, but the data can stay fresh. And it's great for pages that update regularly, but don't need to be real time. And its limitations are, users may see outdated content between updates, and it requires slightly more configuration and logic. It's used in news articles, product listings, and content-driven pages that change often, but not instantly. And then lastly, there is streaming and partial hydration. Streaming and partial hydration are advanced techniques aimed at optimizing performance by reducing the amount of JavaScript the browser needs to process. The streaming is where the server starts sending chunks of HTML as soon as they are ready, rather than waiting to finish rendering the full page. This improves the time to first byte and perceived performance. And then partial hydration is where only the interactive parts of the page are hydrated with JavaScript, and the rest remains as static HTML, reducing JS bundle size and improving performance. 
The benefits of this is it has lightning fast load times, it has efficient resource usage, especially on mobile or slow networks, and it is great for large pages with both static and interactive sections. Its limitations are, it requires modern frameworks like React Server Components, Next.js App Router, or Remix, and it can be complex to set up and debug. And its use cases are complex web apps, basically content-rich sites that need to scale performance. So each rendering method exists for a reason, and understanding when to use each one is key to building fast, reliable, and scalable websites. Choosing the right strategy or combining them can make a huge difference in how users experience your site. So that's all for the video. If you found it insightful, drop a like and subscribe for more.